I see. <laughs> Okay then. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is the, this. Uh, we are now we are going to have panel for Nishitani and Heidegger. Um, we have two presenters, uh, Amanda Fernandez and Edward McDougall. And first, our first presenter is Amanda, and she is a PhD, uh, doctor, doctorate student at the university, uh, university, Universitat Pompeu Fabra, University of Pompeu Fabra. And she's working on Nishitani. And also, uh, I'd like to inform you that uh, she is a founding, founder member of the Latin American Association of Intercultural Philosophy. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now, I'd like to yeah, pass, pass, a, pass a power of the heart. Uh, give a. Okay. Give her the floor. Give, give her the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Vio. Uh, well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here among friends and colleagues once again. And um, to share uh, with you some thoughts about how both Nishitani and Heidegger saw the modern subjectivity as a problem that needed to be overcome. So. I, I thought it would be good to contextualize my topic of presentation, that actually um, the idea of this, this presentation came to my mind uh, after two years ago in Brussels, in the same conference, I talked about Nishitani criticism on the Cartesian cogito, and um, I presented Nishitani's interpretation of it as uh, his, his understand rest cogitans as a self-centered self or egocentric way of being and as a subject of cognition placed in opposition to the world which is seen as an object. So <laughs> after uh, presenting Nishitan's ideas and problematized, a question was raised. This is not a very orthodox interpretation of Descartes. And actually it's not. Nowadays we know that Descartes never used the, the word, the pronoun ego as a noun, as a substantive. He never said the ego. Oh, thank you. <laughs> or uh, defended the concept of subjectivity. Uh, the word subjectum was used only uh, to refer to the concept of substance. And based on that, some scholars uh, defend that rather than subjectivity, we should use the word interiority to talk about the self in Descartes. So, uh, does, why does Nishitani refer to cogito as a ego or subject? I mean, what influences does Nishitani have to develop this analysis? And more importantly, would that be a problem in his attempt to overcome it? Um, so, <laughs> Those questions was, were made to me two years ago, and my answer was the simple one. Uh, Nishitani's interpretation is rooted in his Buddhist, um, in <laughs> his Buddhist influence. Uh, so the, the non-ego concept, Mugan in, in Japanese, the non-ego doctrine says that there is n no such a thing as a, a substantial self. Uh, or unchangeable substantial self that defines human being. So consequently, since Nishitani was a Zen Buddhist religious himself, it is understandable that he would use this vocabulary to characterize the cogito based on these characteristics also, of course, as an ego or an independent subject, reflecting, reflecting, reflecting the opposition uh, with the, the non-ego doctrine. However, there's another way to say this, uh, which is what um, I will talk about here today. It's tracking back to history, how Descartes was read uh, since modernity, how, how the, the, the reading of Descartes was, had, have, have changed during history since modernity. Um, so based on the studies of Alain de Libera, the French scholar, uh, we can affirm that after Kant, 
Heidegger has a big significance on this matter on how uh, the reading of Descartes has changed in Europe. So as Nishitani, Heidegger is a big critic of modern thought. Moreover, Nishitani studied with Heidegger uh, only two years after Heidegger uh, lectures on Kant, uh, which were between 35 and 36. Also, and in these lectures, also when you can find uh, Heidegger's uh, reading on Descartes. So based on this information, uh, I am to analyze how Nishitani's criticism of the Cartesian cogito converges with Heidegger's uh, by considering their philosophical work and cultural backgrounds. We am to discuss how their historical interpretation of the Cartesian self has implications for their diagnosis of the problem of modernity and their attempt to overcome it. So in order to do so, I thought it would be interesting to show how Nishitani uh, analyzed it and how he had attempt to overcome it. And after that, I will talk about Heidegger's interpretation and the relation with the, what I, I, I have seen as a German, uh, impl the implication of the German reading of Descartes and then conclusions. Excuse me. So Nishitani philosophical project to overcome nihilism and to find a meaning to reality uh, through religious experience, it, seem, it, seems it seems necessary to him in this project to analyze the Cartesian cogito. Uh, for him, the cogito defines human nature as a thinking thing that cannot be made an object and is seen as ultimately responsible for the knowledge. According to Nishitani, in order to understand the reality, we need to apprehend the self because the way we understand ourselves has implications in the way that we understand the world and also define our relationship with the world. Uh, so Nishitani states, and I quote, the self of contemporary man is an ego of the Cartesian type constituted self-consciously consciously as something is standing over against the world and all the things that are in it, end of, of quotation. So Nishitani defend that it is a fact that nowadays our ego is an ego of the Cartesian type. This means that our way of being the world today is still guided by the Cartesian description of, nat of human nature which is problematical not in the epistemological level uh, or in the ethical sense, if we analyze the mechanical way that we see the world and the environmental implications or problems that we have to deal with right now. Um, but also in an ontological level itself. So for him, in short, there is four main points that he states that is the reasons why we need to overcome this perspective, the Cartesian perspective of the self. The first of all is the fact that Descartes affirms the existence of the self based on the point of view of the culture itself. So we, if we agree with him that it's a problematical point of view because of the epistemological problem or the ontological or even the ethical uh, point of view, would be problematical to use this, this standpoint to affirm the cogito. Secondly, uh, he's a big critic on the field of what he calls the field of consciousness and rationalism. And the third point would be the abuses provoked by modern dualism that in the end has as consequence a questionable mechanical way to see the world. And the fourth and last point is the nature of the cogito itself. So these are the reasons why the modern concept of cogito as human nature is problematical for him and also why it poses a problem if they are not overcome. According to Nishitani's epistemological analysis, the rationalist perspective of the subject cannot see the reality in its center, cannot achieve the, the center of the reality because uh, the so-called field of consciousness 
We ordinarily relate to things by concepts and representations. So the false, uh, the false understanding of ourselves leads to a false understanding of reality. In order to know reality, we need to, uh, we need to take a path to our interiority, seen as what is more elemental to ourselves. So that said, the problem of knowledge has implications on the problem of subjectivity. Moreover, for Nishitani, behind all the problems introduced by the Cartesian cogito lies the problem of the ontological perspective, which affirms that there is a substance that defines the human being. This point of view is related to the fact that traditionally ontology wasn't able to think the reality, taking into consideration the nothingness in a radical way. Therefore, the modern uh, concept, conception of the self is, is also seen as an ontological issue. But how to overcome it, uh, according to Nishitani? So, if we, we agree with him that the cogitos field constitutes a problem, then it's necessary to question its self evidence and break through its perspective. Based on that, it is possible to think an interiority beyond the par parameters of consciousness that, on one hand, can express the authenticity of the self, and on the other hand, is able to get in touch with the things in itself. Um, according to Nishitani, the answer to this, Nishitani sees uh, the, the, the caste reading as a historical, the caste concept of cogito subjectivity or interiority as a historical perspective, right? It's our way of being the world today. But the answer to that is existential and religious, so it's particularized to myself. My path to overcome uh, modern subjectivity is uh, existential, it's individual. It's not, uh, he's, he's, he doesn't suggest a uh, uh, social overcoming. He's, he's, he's suggesting a, uh, I think that I, I, am I being understood? <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not sure if the word particular is it's good here. So okay. It's an individual process. Um, so he says for example uh, he says that this individual process starts when we pass through a difficult situation in our lives. As for example, somebody that we love dies, or we lose our life career, or we um, are passing through a breaking of a very long relationship, for example. So these kind of situations have the capacity to show us that we have no ground. In Nishitani's words, we stand in the abyss of nihility. Through, so through these challenging situations, uh, we experience, I'm sorry, through a challenging situation where we start questioning the meaning of life and death, one is immersed in a profound and radical doubt that allows one to perceive the negative nothingness that always has been behind reality. In this sense, the model of modern subjectivity represented by the Cartesian cogito loses its self-evidence and is negated. So the encounter with nihility allows the exposition of the illusory nature of the cogito. It is only after passing through the purgative fires of the great doubt and breaking through the nihility that makes itself present at the ground of the ego can the reality of the self, together with the reality of all things, truly appears as real. We find ourselves in the field of Shunyata, where all things and the self are affirm affirmed in its suchness. So, uh, thus, by borrowing the, borrowing the Buddhist concept of Shunyata, Nishitani tries, tries to demonstrate, uh, sorry, Nishitani tries to demonstrate how the perception and acceptance that we have no ground, uh, there is no reality, reality's foundation, are crucial for the discovery of the true elemental subjectivity <coughs> or interiority. 
From the field of Shunyata, we establish another relationship with all things, such that they are perceived in their suchness in a known objective and representational way. So, why Onishitani uh, critiques the ontological tradition for not considering nothing as in a radical way, Heidegger, uh, along with few others, uh, as Masayekar, has been an exception on, on Watt's philosophy. Uh, Heidegger raised the fundamental metaphysics question, why is there something instead of nothing? And he analyzed the place of nothing in relation to being. So uh, the experience of nothing for Heidegger has the power to unfold reality and show the truth, and expose the truth. Uh, we can attest this through the analysis of, for example, the concept of angst on him, which disclosed the annihilation of all entities, and even through the analysis of the jar, that it's voids, uh, the analysis of the jar, that in its voids, can reveal the four dimension of reality, of the world, of earth, heaven, divine, and mortals. Uh, Heidegger's criticism of the uh, Cartesian subjectivity or modern thought in general can be related to his project to overcome metaphysics and his critique on technology. So in the text, the, que the question concerning technology, Heidegger describes our time as the age of the domain of the calculative thinking. This perspective determines the exploratory action of the individual with nature, provoking it to reveal itself as an available object of modern technology. For Heidegger, the modern technology is problematic because it sees, it sees nature not only as it is, but as a source source of energy or wealth that can be extracted and stored as such. As Nishitani described it, this problem comes from the objectifying way to see the world as a mechanism, as a tool or resource, as a product of the rational capacity and the dualistic Cartesian perspective. Uh, uh, and for Related to, to Heidegger, how, how Heidegger proposed an overcoming. So within his proposal to overcome metaphysics in a general way, the German thinker understands that the perception of nothingness, of nothing, as correlative to being, allows the individual to overcome the objectifying perspective of entity, which defines nothingness as an essential instrument for revelation of the truth. In, or, in other words, the perception of the finitude of existence reveals nothingness, allowing one to transcend the ontic, pers uh, I'm sorry, the ontic representation of the entities towards a truly authentic posture of the self and of reality. So besides that point, we, we have to mention that for Heidegger, the human, based on its relation to being, cannot, uh, it's seen as a as a design, which has a set of particular characteristics that uh, the concept of res cognitans of subject doesn't uh, comprehend. Since Heidegger believes that design is being in the world, he rejects the separation between subject and object by ar ar arguing that there is not possible, that it's not possible to think in the existence of human beings apart from the external world. In short, to be human is to be in the world. Now I get to my point, the, which is the German um, Cartesian criticism. In fact, we believe that Heidegger has an important role in the understanding of the cogito we have today, and eventually on the interpretation Nishitani developed in his philosophical project. As we mentioned in the introduction, uh, Alain de Libera says that the analysis of Descartes developed by Heidegger is not completely orthodox either. According to the French scholars, Heidegger's reading of Descartes is quantified. For Libera, Libera, since Heidegger, the equation I equals subject 
is installed as a distinctive feature of the Cartesianism. The main point here is that Heidegger's reading of Descartes is influenced by Kant's philosophical perspective. So according to the writer of Being Time, Kant is the middle point of modern problem of the ontological distinction between subject and object, a problem which was introduced by Descartes from the separation between res cogitans and res extensa. That culminates in Hegel's differentiation between nature and the spirit. About Heidegger's reading of Descartes, it is important to notice his vocabulary. He says, and I quote, the I, the ego, is for Kant, as it was for Descartes, res cogitans, res, something that thinks, namely something that represents, perceives, judges, agrees, disagrees, but also loves, hates, strives, and likes. Descartes calls all these modes of behavior cogitaciones. End of quotation. Uh, in this quotation, we can see that Heidegger uses the same vocabulary as Nishitani. The I equals the ego equals the res cogitans. Besides that, Heidegger does not differentiate the Kantian definition of the subject and the Cartesian res cogitans. When the Kantian's conception that says that the individual knows reality by representations is included in the activities of the spirit of the Cartesian cogitari. Thus, the Kantian understanding of the entity as which can be, can be the object of representation is attributed to Descartes. Thus, the subject is not, I'm sorry, the subject is not, it's not Cartesian, but it is as a firm Liberta, an invention implicated in the German idealism thought and its interpretation of Descartes, rationalism and dualistic doctrine of the mind and matter. Besides that, the idea of the Cartesian ego is, later, is a later invention used to read and criticize Descartes as Heisig uh, has pointed out in the article The Quest of the True Self, Young's Discover of Modern Invention. As far as we have investigated, the first time that the first person of singular pronoun is used as a noun in history of philosophy is in the critique of pure reason. Thus, ich and thus, selbst uh, are respectively, respectively translated into English as the ego and the self. For Beatrice Longness, the fact that uh, this fact we will influence the German dualism of the subsequent decades, from Fichte and Schelling to Hegel, and even further on the uh, on the substantiation of the ego. Uh, I'm sorry, and even further, the substantiation of the, the ego has consequences on the French philosophy, in particular with Sartre and Merleau-Ponty. And I conclude. So based on the analysis of Heidegger's critique and the study of the Libera, we can claim that Nishitani's interpretation of the problem of modern subjectivity is not historically isolated, but it's constituted according to the German perspective of the question, which seems to have taken root in the whole tradition from Kant to Heidegger, and even further on the French existential philosophy becoming the most notorious version of Cartesianism. Thus, Nishitani absorbed the current point of the view of the problem using the current terms to refer to the Cartesian cogito. Based on this, we believe that, although it's not an orthodox understanding of Descartes, the proposal of the Japanese philosopher is not diminished, since the perception of, of the sub... I'm sorry. Since the perception of since the perception of subjectivity or inferiority in the one is the one that persists today and it shows relation to the problems of our time such as the problems of technology and especially the, to the necessity to overcome nihilism. Then the question of its overcoming remains. Besides doing the technical work of Trekinishitani's interpretation, 
of the Cartesian philosophy back to the tradition to Heidegger and his Kantian influence, I hope to have raised a curiosity on their conception of nothingness and how, aside from the cultural divergences, divergences, divergences or divergences? Die? Divergences. <laughs> Both philosophers saw in the encounter with nothing, nothing for Heidegger, absolute nothing, nothingness for Nishitani, as the possibility of overcoming modern problems, including our perception of the self. But more than that, the encounter with nothingness can be seen as the chance to find truth and meaning to reality. That's it. Thank you very much for your patience. What I, I try to do is uh, showing that the reading of the cut that Nishitani has is not, although is is not orthodox as I said, is not historically isolated. We can see that uh, this this is a, this reading appears also in other philosophers, and I I thought it was very close to what Heidegger said. Uh, about Descartes, but mo most I, I think that besides Heidegger, the key is Kant. How how Kant uh, criticized the Cartesian subjectivity and uh, added to that that this this what we have today. We 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 see the distinction between res cogitans and res tensans, and we we directly think of the subject and the object, but it's Kant, it's not Descartes, you know? And also we, we are talking about the way that uh, we see the word as uh, object of our knowledge as a subject that represents and conceptualizes the word, but also this is not Descartes, it's Kant. So I thought that Heidegger would be this uh, point of connection between what, what the reading of Descartes was in the past and what we have today, and how Nishitani uh, also has this quite close reading as the Germans did. Yeah, no, is it okay. Good, your own conclusion, like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, actually, just about 
that the subject that you mentioned. I think Heidegger's sort of answers to that uh, problem in his Kant book in 1929, uh, when, he, when, when, there's a, when there's a discussion about the critique of ego, he mentions that actually the, the conception of ego that we are criticizing is the one that, that, that's uh, made more common by Kant. And, and so it becomes quickly a, a discussion of Kant. And so I think in that sense, maybe if you go back to that book, which I haven't extensively uh, examined mm -hmm. on my own, but I think we can find traces of that uh, connection between Kant and, and, and Descartes and how Heidegger digs into that. I want to ask you, um, uh, after, especially after the 1930s, or late 30s and 40s, but in, in more specifically in the 50s, Heidegger talks about um, not overcoming metaphysics, but leaving metaphysics to itself. Mm -hmm. And the conception that, that is at work is a, a sort of a switch from überbindung, which means overcome, as, as we use in English, to verbindung, which means something more like uh, fixing or twisting it or turning itself against itself. What's that question again? Überbindung and the other one is? Verbindung. Verbindung. And so, in that sense, I think uh, when Heidegger mentions leaving the discussion about overcoming metaphysics is important and it's, it, it can be under, interpreted as an acknowledgement of the fact that he himself, like all other philosophers in the, in the 19th century, we can, we can name Schopenhauer, Hegel, and Marx, and, 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 and Kierkegaard, all those philosophers trying to overcome the philosophy and metaphysics in their, in their own interpretations, in their own ways, Heidegger realized that he tried to commit the same and, and, and he failed with his being in time. But in his later thought, he, with, with that acknowledgement, I think with the, with the statement that we should leave overcoming metaphysics to itself and stuck with that discussion whether we're overcoming metaphysics or not, I think he realized his, his earlier mistake and in that sense his response to technology saying yes and no at the mm -hmm. same time and, and situating himself in between, he's sort of trying to answer in a more original way than, than he tried to do in Being in Time or in, in his earlier writing. So I would wonder if Nishitani has uh, a sort of a certain similar, uh, certain uh, conception of uh, leaving metaphysics to itself rather than trying to destructure or overcome in mm -hmm. the sense of and, and not having done to be decided with later interpretation of the issue. Interesting. I don't think so. <laughs> I, as far as I, I, I could read, Nishitani, he, well, he, he tries to show that there is a problem, okay? We are dealing with a bunch of problems that started with this perspective of self, of the other, of the world. And we need to uh, walk on a path to, to, uh, through our interior, interiority to ourselves and look for a more elemental, as you mentioned, that uh, original, you, you used the word original, as you mentioned that Heidegger did. But I, I, I don't, I, as far as I know, I don't, I don't think that Nishitani thought of uh, using a word or expression of letting go, other than overcome. It's interesting. I might be touching on this a bit oh. because I will be talking more about the light tide in my okay. presentation. I'm hopefully not going to tread on anyone's toes here, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, so, uh, thanks so much for your talk, first of all. Um, Heidegger also said that existence in every single case is always mine. Mm -hmm. So he talks a lot about particular, particularized existence, despite his criticism of Descartes and despite his uh, criticism of Kant and subjectivity and, and despite introducing um, the concept of being in the world as a, as a hyphenated, you know, together concept. Uh, he still, at all points in time, always stated, at least the early Heidegger, 
uh, that uh, existence is, um, uh, is, is, is always mine. So the notion of mindness. So on one hand, I was wondering with Nishtan, what Nishtan would have to say about this. Uh, because obviously, um, uh, the way that I have understood, or the way that most people understand the, the Zen Buddhist notion of the no-self, um, it would, I think we would need to talk a little bit more about how to kind of reconcile this mm -hmm. too. Um, and another question perhaps will have to do with, uh, it has to do with my <laughs> lack of knowledge about Nishtani basically. Um, of course for Heidegger, trying to make sense of um, existence had to do prim primordially with time, with temporality, uh, with temporal unfolding. And uh, I would love to hear you talk a little bit about what Nishitani, if, if Nishitani took on uh, the question of time in, in the way that he was conceiving of this and uh, whether it was uh, very, very important to him or not. It's a very tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about the conception of no ego or no self. Uh, what Nishitani thinks is that there is no ego, there is no self, right? Based on the Buddhist doctrine. So, who am I if I'm nothing? The answer is for him is that we are always in relation to with everything. Who I am is the, this relation. It should be, he, he says that we are um, a server and a master. In some point we are a server, in some point we are a master. We are always... Uh, what makes the reality is this relation to everything. So it's, it's not... The, his point of criticizing uh, dualism, uh, the modern dualism, is that the modern dualist puts a uh, point man in a, in another in a different um, parameter. Uh, like we are more important because we are we we are we have the cognitive uh, ability. Uh, and for him, what what make the reality as it is is always this relation, and it's it's not always this relation as we are more important than the other things. We are always changing in this relation. Okay, about time. How oh, oh, can I cannot <laughs> I cannot talk to you, but uh, about it. But uh, he talks about time and history in the what is religion. Yeah, can I also point out I will be discussing a lot of that stuff in my presentation. So please be patient. <laughs> Thank you for your comments and questions.